training has occurred at 6.30 p.m. And we have our regular coffee cups that come out about 8.15, 8.30. I'm just going to be going into Vitamix for my coffee. Yeah. Anywhere yeah. that I have ever been in my life. Yeah. Amen. 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 Really good. The stuff that was free before only had two out of four of the coffee in it. It was like the regular milk can and vitamin. I can't make its way back in anyway. So, Mike? Yes, ma'am. Um. And if, it, if snow or ice, because we're getting into that season, if snow or ice covers the road, then church service will be canceled. And I'll send out a text blast, but just, just to remind y'all, are there any other, oh, and we will have board meeting. When do you get the statement in? Usually in the third week of the next month. So... And we can just, I mean, you can just, I guess we could just go through December. Well, we could do that. But um, we were thinking either the third or fourth Sunday. Uh, yes. Uh, fourth, fourth Sunday. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, so we'll have board meet, PPR board meeting the fourth Sunday of January, right after service. <clears throat> January twenty eighth. Thank you. And then next Sunday, um, if some of you can stay after worship service, and we'll get the Christmas decorations taken down and put up and. That'll be that. And it shouldn't, I wouldn't think it would take us that long. It usually doesn't. And I'm going to take a couple of them down um, after church today. So if y'all could do that, that would be great. Are there any other announcements? Well, let's, let's bow. Let's join in the, the prayer that is found in the bulletin. Heavenly Father, we thank you for letting your light shine each day after year. As we go into a new year, be with us and help us to shine your light more brightly each day. Thank you that we may always lift our eyes to you and your hand that brings order to everything. Give our hearts strength to continue to be faithful to you Throughout this coming new year, continue to provide us with your strength and power that we may bring glory to you. In Christ's name, amen. <clears throat> Our call to worship is on page 861 at Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise the Lord in the heights. Praise the Lord, all his angels. Praise the Lord, all his host. Praise the Lord, sun and moon. Praise the Lord, all shining stars. Praise the Lord, highest heavens and all waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord who commanded and they were created, who established them forever and ever and fix their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and smoke, stormy wind fulfilling God's command, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, beast and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, <clears throat> kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and maidens together, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, whose name alone is exalted, whose glory is above earth and heaven. God has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his faithful ones. 
for the people of Israel who are near their God. Praise the Lord. Amen. As we went through the the uh, Advent season, there were several things that kind of just came to my mind, you know, how my mind works, and uh, I thought I would spend a little time today and a little time next week talking about the anomalies of the Advent season, the anomalies. In this context, an, an anomaly is anything that's unusual, unexpected events, experiences, or behaviors that deviate from the normal or from what was anticipated. So that's, those are the kind of things that we're going to talk about today. I'm just going to talk about a couple. The thing, where I'm going to start is what started everything. That's the, what we call the Bethlehem Star. And when I thought about that, I thought, first of all, what was it? How long had it been there? How bright was it? And why? See, I told you my mind works in weird ways. Um, it is believed, it, there's a lot, of, a lot of theories, but it comes down to basically what God did because the two most prevalent things was called, one was called a conjunction of planets. That would be Jupiter, Mars, and I forget the other one, Saturn. There was a period of time near the first century where they were aligned in a way where it put off a, a, a lot of bright light. But God created the planets. So whether it was that or God created that star, it's both all this was in his hands. So it was that's where the light came. Now, what made it so bright? And why it was so bright it could be seen for over a thousand miles. How do we know that? Because there is a verse in Matthew that tells us. Um, about who came, well, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but the, the ones that describe it, about the Magi the most, because they were a thousand, over a thousand miles away. So we know it's that bright. We know it was in the sky over Bethlehem. Around, and, and what, what made the Magi even know to follow that star? I mean, you think about it. You're a thousand miles away, and you see this bright light. Oh, I'm going to go follow that. So I had to find out what, what prompted the Magi to even follow that light. Found out that, and by the way, there's, there is a, either we believe there's three Magi, other religions believe there's 12 or 13. Logically, they didn't travel alone because they were transporting gold, frankincense, and myrrh, all of which were very, very valuable back then. So they had to have had some kind of entourage with them. But around, and they're very scholarly people. They were very, very intelligent people. They were astrologers. So when I found that out, it explains why when they saw this unusual light, they wanted to go find out what it was. I'll get more to them in just a minute. And also around 750 B.C., there were two prophets. One was a major prophet, Isaiah. The other was a minor prophet, prophet who was Micah. Those two were living at the same time, even though, even though they were in different parts of the country. They both prophesied basically the same thing, and that was the coming of the Messiah. And that is in 750 to 680 B.C., so that's a long time. And then in Numbers, it also was talked about, and one other, but I, it slips my mind. Uh, so that's the reason that the, the Magi probably came to... Uh, that came to see the baby Jesus. Now, we know the shepherds are in the, in the fields close by, and they are approached by an angel. So we know that they probably go forthwith. They probably leave immediately, and they're close enough they can probably get to, the, to see Jesus in the manger, see him in the stable. But it, as we look at nativity scenes and we look at those things, we always see the shepherds and the three wise men and, but if you're over a thousand miles away, it's, if you walk at the pace of a camel, 
It would take over three months to get from where they were, and I'll tell you that in a minute, from where they were to Bethlehem. And they stopped off at Jerusalem first because they had that conversation with Herod. And that's one of the things that gives away when they might have left from where they were. The scripture tells us, and I never noticed this before, Matthew 2.2, 2, it says, where, he, then they're talking to Herod at this time. Where is this child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising. So they saw the star when it first appeared. I have never, ever, as many times as I've read that, that never jumped out at me. And we've come to pay homage, so we know what happened after that. So where did the Magi come from? Um, and who, what were their names? I found that in the 8th century, the names of the three Magi were published in a document or called a chronicle called the Excerpta Latina Barbera. That's a Latin publication. Their names were Balthazar, Melchor, and Gaspar. Where did they come from? Uh, first of all... <coughs> If we know what they're bringing, it tells us where they were. Uh, the one that was carrying frankincense, frankincense comes from a boswellia tree. It's only grown in certain parts of the country, in mountainous, dry, arid, rugged territory. And it can be found in, uh, pardon me, It can be found in, in Africa, in, around Ethiopia, and in Sudan. That's where it's found. So we know that one of them probably came from that area. The myrrh, which is very similar to frankincense, it's grown also on, on a, a, a shrub-type tree that has lots of briars and, and, and very, very hard to handle. It's called a camphoria myrrh. And you, you get the rosin from both of them the same way. You scratch, you scratch the bark in a diagonal way, and then you put something down to catch it as it runs out, and then it hardens. It also is grown in very, very limited places in the world. It is also grown around um, north, in North Africa. The last one is gold. I was surprised to find out there is no gold in Israel. So we know that the Egyptians had gold. We know that they did lots of things with gold. But that's, on the wrong, that's in the wrong place territory for this to have made sense. Gold was most, mostly prevalent at that time in, um, in, in uh, excuse me, southern Arabia. They were the ones that had the gold in that part of the country. So it is believed that one of them was a king of I'll find it here in a minute. Uh, oh, that Balasthar was the king of Arabia, or it's now Ethiopia. That part is called Ethiopia. Malachar was the king of Persia, and that Gaspar was the king of what it was now called India. All right, so that, that little research thing now tells us who they were, where they came from, probably what the star was. And it also explains in Matthew, it tells us in Matthew that when the Magi came, they saw the baby in a house. That was the key words that, you know, that when they, if they saw the star when it rose and it took them 90 days to get there, it made sense that the crowds would have left because they came to register and then they weren't going to hang around. I'm sure get back home, go to work, take care of the livestock, whatever. So before the Magi got there, Joseph and Mary had found a house or were living in an inn or something. Because the Bible tells us that the Magi saw the baby in a house. And that's all of that for today. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. This was unexpected, so I didn't have time to prepare. We'll all miss Malcolm today. Our scripture reading comes from Galatians 4, 4 through 7. It said, but when the fullness of the time came, God sent forth his son, 
born of a woman, born under the law, so that he might redeem those who were under the law, and that we might receive the adoption as sons. Because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. It's the word of God for the people of God. Excuse me. We'll now re recite the Apostles' Creed found on page 881, followed by the Gloria Patri on page 71. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Our prayer concerns are on the back of the bulletin, and to try to shorten the bulletin process, I took another prayer concern list, and it may not be the one that we had, but it's one. Um, I'd like to remember Diane Fry's family. Um, Diane's service will be at their, it will be, <coughs> excuse me, January 13th. There'll be visitation at Robertson County Funeral Home. <coughs> <coughs> at 1 o'clock until 2 o'clock. And then there'll be a private family service here at Palestine. And so if you would like to go visit with the family and try to comfort them, go to Robertson County Funeral Home at 1 p.m. on uh, January 13th. And that's, and knowing Diane, I mean, she would love it that way because she never wanted anything to be her, I mean, you know, it, she was just, she was more interested in other people than she was in herself. And she was always trying to bring people together through big brothers, big sisters, like matching five children with this man right here. So. <clears throat> We'd like to also be in prayer for Mary Wasaki's family. And Sharon, we are so sorry about your Aunt Mary. Um, baby Hadley family, and I mentioned that last week, but um, <clears throat> Hadley was born, I think, it, I, I think in June, premature. She fought for her little life and... Um, made it to be able to go to daycare, uh, child care, six months old, and it was now about two weeks ago she died when after they had put her down for a nap at the daycare. And, you know, I can't even imagine how that mama's feeling and that family's feeling. Are there any others that we'd like to add or update? Yes, sir. Rodney passed away. I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. 
Bobby Payne. How's Rodney's wife doing? Oh. Okay. Are there any others that, yes, ma'am? Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> and, and what's the last name? <coughs> okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Is he seeking medical attention for it, or do you know? That's not good. <coughs> Anyone else? Yes, sir. Um, we're not going to worry about Lucas because he was with us Christmas Day all day long, pretty much, and he's going to be back tomorrow. That's my joy. Sorry, Kathy, but he's with us. He felt so comfortable, he went and took him a nap on the big bed. <laughs> We've got this bed and, um, yeah, he, he'd worked till 5 o'clock that morning. He, he, this young man is working, doing mill work. He works from 7 p.m. until 5 a.m. He got off work at 5 a.m. Christmas morning. He took him a nap. He was in he was in his vehicle heading to our house and this he's from he's in Elizabethton, Kentucky. He was in the in the truck at eight thirty Christmas morning coming to our house. And then of course we had to fill him full of food. <laughs> he, needed <laughs> he did, he needed a nap, but but this, this bed we've got the, the mattress is, is quite old. And so when you lay down in it, the mattress just does this number to you, and it's like, okay, <laughs> back in mama's arms again. <clears throat> so, we're glad he's going to be with us tomorrow. He is, he's just such a sweetheart. Such a sweetheart, even if he is Ken to Larry and I. <laughs> Kathy, be thankful I didn't bring your name up in that. <laughs> um, any other concerns? Yes. And I think I had, this is just, I was trying to reduce time and getting the bulletin done, and I went to the wrong prayer list. Sorry. <laughs> uh, are they? Okay, thank you. Well, and it's it's pretty early to be making arrangements and stuff as well. <clears throat> yes, ma'am? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. Okay, good. Brian Hilton, who's been on our prayer list for so long, <clears throat> you know, he struggles with schizophrenia, and, um, <clears throat> and that's Brian who? Hilton, down at the bottom, third from the bottom, third row from the bottom, 
Tina is actually holding down a job now. Good. And doing much better. Okay. And like I said, this is an older prayer list that I've got that I was just trying to hurry up and get things done. And, and so next week it might look a little bit better, I hope. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Mm. And everybody's kind of down. I can't help her. I don't have a job. I just want to pray for her. You know, sometimes you just got to let drama play out. And turn you back to it. It's up to you whether to turn on that channel or not. <coughs> Just you could always go on strike. <laughs> Do we have any joys we'd like to share? Yes, ma'am. I'm glad to see 2023 is good. <laughs> yeah. Well, the good news is we're still here. God hadn't given up on us yet. It's still 2023. It's still 2023. He's got he's got a little, you know, got got a few hours left. I hope in us. So, yes, sir. Oh, wonderful! Thank you so much, Jim. <coughs> Yeah. That's great. Thank you. Appreciate it. Any other joys? I'm so glad to be here. That's the truth. Bonnie's back. That's right. Bonnie's back. We miss Bonnie. Bonnie's been sick. Mary Nell's been sick, so we need to lift Mary Nell up. Uh, Casey is in Olive Branch. I, uh, Rusty and Malcolm aren't here today. Just need to lift them up. I'm not sure what's going on, but um, it's odd for them not to be here. And we just love them to pieces, so anyone else? Oh, Curly's not here, but we know why. Let's bow. Precious God, we give you thanks that you have gathered us here this morning together. We... We come at a time today that sometimes we just kind of itch to get out of the current year that we're in and get into a, a brand new year. We really want to just leave the other stuff behind and go forward, but sometimes it follows us. Sometimes we pray and, and we feel like our prayers are just bouncing from the ceiling back onto us. Sometimes we wonder if, if you're there. Sometimes we doubt. Sometimes we can't see your light. We can't feel your touch. And we just don't know where you are. Be with us and help us during times like that. Help us continue to lift our eyes to you, knowing where you are. 
Help us to continue to pray, knowing that you will definitely hear every word we speak. Help us to continue to wait and be patient for your replies. And let us not forget the great mercy, the powerful grace, and the unconditional love that you continue to pour out on us. Be with us for what's left of this year. And be with us as we continue to go in, as, as we go into this, this new year. And Father, I ask that you be with everyone who is on our prayer list. That for the families who are grieving, you bring them comfort and peace. For families who are having relationship problems or maybe even some drama problems, I ask that you be with them and shine your light brightly. For others who are undergoing medical tests or in hospitals, I ask that you be with their families, with them and their medical staff. Bring your healing and bring your power and bring your love to those who need it. I ask all this in Christ's name, who taught his disciples to pray most perfectly by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. As we forgive those who trespass against us, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Time of year, the dry throat is going around. Did everybody have a good Christmas? It's kind of hard to mess them up, isn't it? Even even Diane Fry had a good Christmas. And you know, Ronnie Pendleton passed away a year ago this past Christmas. That might be some of the best Christmas days. The <clears throat> text this morning is... From the second chapter of Luke, beginning at verse 22, and going through verse 40. After eight days had passed, it was time to, I'm I'm sorry, when the the time came for uh, their purification according to the law of Moses, They brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had, been revealed, it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple. 
And when the parents brought the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then, then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and speak about the child to all who were looking for redemption of Israel. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. May God add his blessing to the reading and hearing of his words. <clears throat> you know, the, the, last, the last five to six weeks of every year, has got to be the toughest for any child around. Our kids would drive us insane. How many more days? How many more days? How many more days till Christmas? I'm like, can you just give it up? But then you know you have to stop and think, I did the same thing to my parents, and probably all y'all did too. It's just what children do. And some of us haven't outgrown that, and we decided that, you know, we're just going to continue to be that way, which is not a bad thing. It's not. It's just not. But sometimes we have to wait. That's what Advent is all about. It's about waiting. And so for four weeks, for the purpose of <clears throat> receiving Christ into us, for seeing him as a child. For about four weeks, we waited, and we sang, O come, O come, Emmanuel. It's all about Christ coming to us. And we do that every year, if you come here, or if you go to another church that that, uh, that does Advent. It's not a biblical thing. But it's really, I think, kind of a spiritual thing. And I think we do need to reflect on the hope, the peace, the joy, and the love that comes from Christ. It's something we need to do not only for four short weeks at the end of every year. But maybe it's something we need to continue to keep in mind. I really think that's a lot of what Simeon did. Simeon, Simeon was, depending on what you read or what I read, was somewhere between the age of 240 and 370. But I don't know. There's several Simeons in the Bible. So I don't know if maybe these people who were doing all of this high talking were talking about the first Simeon or this Simeon, even though they were saying it was from Luke chapter 2. So anyway, there's some disagreement on his age, but the Bible does say that he was elderly. 
and some of us can relate to that. Some more than others, right, Robert? That's right. But the Holy Spirit had impressed upon Simeon years earlier that he would not die until his eyes had seen God's Messiah. So every day he waited. Every day he wondered. Every day he was faithful. Every day he knew God would keep his promise. But days turned in to months. Months turned into years. And we don't know how many years because the Bible doesn't say. But my guess would be he waited a long time. A long time. Until one day, God's promise was revealed to him. Mary and Joseph had brought Jesus to be dedicated to God. The Holy Spirit at that particular moment had led Simeon to the temple and he was there waiting for the child to come in. I'm sure he didn't know that he was waiting for the child. But you know, there's some times when we just, we're somewhere and we think, well, what am I doing here? I don't need to be here. And then all of a sudden, it's revealed to you why you need to be there. Have any of you ever had that experience? Well, if you haven't, look around because the Holy Spirit's always leading and guiding us. Whether you want, I mean, it just is. I'm just saying. <clears throat> Simeon wasted no time in getting to that child. He knew when they stepped in what was happening. He knew that was the Messiah. Eight days old, Simeon goes over there. He takes that child in his arms, and he prays. He prays, and during that time, he's praising. Thank you, God, that you've revealed this to me. Now I can die in peace. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> he goes on to confess that that child will be a light for the revelation of of the Gentiles, who we all are. He also said that the child would also be the glorious presence of God for the Jews, which he is. And the message that he gave for Mary in particular He wanted to make sure that Mary knew that her baby would grow to be not just any ordinary person, but that he would be the Messiah. That he would oppose many in Israel. that he would face opposition. And that prophecy came true. He also told Mary that her soul would be pierced as with a sword. And that was another prophecy that came through because it was. Then there was Anna. Anna 
was a priest. Well, I'm sorry, she was a prophet. A prophetess, I think is what they really called them. And she pretty much lived at the temple. She was there day in, day out. She was there... She was there fasting and praying. Her concern was about the redemption of Israel, about the salvation, about the saving of Israel. So day in, day out. And she was not a young chicken herself. She was 84, 87. She was in her, she was in her 80s. She's not as old as Robert. Isn't that right, Robert? That's right. That's right. But she was there. She continued to pray. Doesn't say how long. But she was faithful in her prayers. She was faithful in her waiting. Because day in, day out, she did that for no telling how many years. She didn't give up. She didn't doubt. She did her thing. The Holy Spirit placed her in that temple where she witnessed firsthand seeing that Christ child. When she saw him, she immediately knew it was the Messiah. She began praising God and speaking to everyone who would listen to her. She told him that redemption would be coming with that child. That salvation would come with him. You know, sometimes we have to wait. Sometimes we don't like to wait. We just don't. I've told y'all, I'm going to say it again. I prayed for patience one time. Mother-in-law came to live with us for 23 years. I will not pray for that again, mainly because I'm not going to have another mother-in-law. <laughs> about a mother-in-law I'm not going to have another one Robert mm -hmm. nope sometimes we just have to have faith when we don't feel like we do sometimes we have to have hope when we look out and we don't see any Sometimes we don't understand why we're going through what we're going through. Sometimes we literally need to take time out and look. Look all around us. Because there's a whole lot of times that seeing is really believing. Most times we don't think that God cares that much about us, but he does. He does. He cares what has happened to us this year. And I can promise you that he will be with us through next year. Tomorrow is the beginning of a brand new year. Brand new year. We can choose to see things differently. We can choose to see through God's eyes in our lives, into our lives. Christmas has come and gone. But there's something that needs to stay with us. 
is always with you. He is always and he brings with him hope peace joy and love if we will just Stop thinking about whatever situation we are in at the present time. Open our eyes. Look for him. Because he's in the end. This you should say with us all year. Amen. 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 Now may God continue to walk before you, to guide you, beside you, to comfort you, and behind you, to give you strength. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.